Now, these are kind of silly questions I got, but they do correlate to the actual OS. And it's not the actual device themselves, but syncing. Syncing is something we do all the time, and uh, syncing is pretty crucial to making things work harmoniously and back everything up, and uh, it is pretty important. Now, we all know that iPhone is a little bit too, I don't know, maybe you like it, but I hate syncing the iPhone. I dread it, I never do it because it's such a pain in the butt. I never back up because it takes three hours to create a backup. I never restore from backup because it takes three hours. I never update my apps because half the transfers are on purchase. I just don't think that the iPhone is good at syncing. Now I've tried syncing uh, the Windows Phone 7 device in both Windows and Macintosh, and boy are they two different experiences. Macintosh takes a very iTunes-esque kind of application, it's called Windows uh, Phone 7 Connector. And it's actually a really beautiful application. It's very basic, raw to the bone, and it just gets your content. It uses your iTunes library, so everything in your iTunes library that isn't copy protected by iTunes DRM, you can get onto your device. So you go through your music and you check everything you would, and it's a lot more manual. I mean, you can do it automatically, but I don't want half the music on my device on my phone. I want to be able to choose, and you can do that on the iPhone, but not so harmoniously. And you can drag songs. Now, these are kind of silly questions I got, but they do correlate to the actual OS. And it's not the actual device themselves, but syncing. Syncing is something we do all the time, and uh, syncing is pretty crucial to making things work harmoniously and back everything up. And uh, it is pretty important. Now, we all know that iPhone is a little bit too, I don't know, maybe you like it, but I hate syncing the iPhone. I dread it, I never do it because it's such a pain in the butt. I never back up because it takes three hours to create a backup. I never restore from backup because it takes three hours. I never update my apps because half the transfers are on purchase. I just don't think that the iPhone is good at syncing. Now, I've tried syncing uh, the Windows Phone 7 device in both Windows and Macintosh, and boy, are they two different experiences. Macintosh takes a very iTunes-esque kind of application. It's called Windows uh, Phone 7 Connector, and it's actually a really beautiful application. It's very basic, raw to the bone, and it just gets your content. It uses your iTunes library, so everything in your iTunes library that isn't copy protected by iTunes DRM, you can get onto your device. So you go through your music, and you check everything you would, and it's a lot more manual. I mean, you can do it automatically, but I don't want half the music on my device on my phone. I want to be able to choose, and you can do that on the iPhone, but not so harmoniously. And you can drag... Right, so let's go into games, and I think this is probably the most impressive part about Windows 7. Windows Phone 7 integrates Xbox Live. So if you have Xbox Live, it doesn't matter if you have a silver account or if you have a gold account. What you can do is play games on your phone and you get achievements for them. Now they're not the achievements like you would expect. I mean you can't play a direct import of Call of Duty Black Ops, but you can play Tetris for example or Bejeweled and if you get something completed you get an achievement that goes on your actual gamer tag which transmits to your Xbox. So it's like a universal gaming system. I really like that. I think social gaming really sucks on the iPhone. Game Center is subpar. I can't say that I like it at all. Um, it is fast, it is convenient, but it's just not something that I think is well integrated. Xbox Live has a market. There are a ton of people that use it, and I think Xbox Live is without a doubt the best way to go with this kind of deal. You can message and send friend requests just as you would be able to do on your Xbox, whereas with this, it's kind of like, well, you have a bunch of friends and you can see what they're doing, but you can't message them, you can't talk to them. You can do that on Xbox Live, and I think it's very well integrated. Now let's talk about gaming itself. We're going to take the iPhone's most impressive game in my opinion, and that would have to be Rage HD, uh, without a doubt. Um, here's the issue, and I downloaded Assassin's Creed, the demo, so I mean I haven't even played this yet, but I've heard the graphics are superb. Um, there's two issues with Windows Phone 7. Like I stated earlier, there's no multitasking, so it will actually force you know, it will quit if you get a phone call or something like that. And the other issue, wow, it didn't even work. The other issue is that games take a crap load of time to load on Windows Phone 7. I don't know why it is, I don't know what has caused it to be this long, but it just refuses to work harmoniously. Um, I've heard there's a complaint about being able to fast forward. I heard you could press the back arrow, but that just took me out of the app. So we'll just wait, maybe once you've launched it once. Anyway, we're going to go into Rage HD. Uh, Rage HD, if you haven't downloaded it and you have an iPhone, is an absolute must. It's gorgeous on the Retina display, and it all honestly looks like a console game on a phone. It is just astounding. Um, 
you go around, you have this different gun, and as you can see, this real world environment is just incredible. It's only a first person shooter right now, it's kind of an arcade style game, and I'm getting clobbered because I'm looking at stuff through the camera lens, but um, it's just really well put together, and this graphics engine is just superb. Now, it loads fast, it's ready to go, and it works, but there are not a lot of games like this on the iPhone. Now, Windows Phone 7, and I don't know why it is, but all games are gorgeous. I think the main reason is because they have all the Xbox Arcade developers developing for their system. Now, this is the trial, as you can see, and it only gives you five tries, so I'll have to buy it. The only issue and the only reason I was holding back was because it's seven bucks, but... Um I don't really want to go through the tutorial, I don't really want to go through all this, but you can already see that the graphics are superb. Um, I'm hoping it'll load just enough that I can show you, but Bejeweled is absolutely gorgeous on this device. I've never seen a better looking game. And let's be honest, Bejeweled isn't like a memory or graphic intensive game, it's freaking blocks that are getting bursted. But the displays, the transitions, and the animations just kill bejeweled on the iPhone. It's so pretty, it works so harmoniously, and the only issue is it takes a long time to load. Wow, this looks really good. This might be on par with Rage HD. It's close. Okay, I'm not going to spend all the time playing this, but as you can see, gaming on Windows Phone 7 is absolutely... It, these operating systems are getting really advanced, and I think Windows Phone 7 and iOS will definitely be the two that you play games on. Android kind of sucks for gaming. There's not a lot of games for it, and there's a lot of fragmentation in the market, so it won't work on one device, but it'll work on the other. And that's the reason the iOS uh, development platform has stayed so tight, is only iOS games work on the iPhone or the iPad. There's two devices they have to develop for, not 150. I hope that doesn't happen to Windows Phone 7. I hope there's not, and I hope it doesn't get to the point where there's so many different phones running this stuff that they can't keep it all up to date. That's where Android went wrong, and I really hope that they can get rid of that fragmentation on uh, Windows Phone 7. So that's gaming. As of right now, I'm going to have to say the iPhone wins, but I'm really nervous for the iPhone because Windows Phone 7 is already superb in its third week. It took the iPhone about three years to get to the point where it is now. And granted, Windows Phone 7 did have a head start, but already I'm really impressed. And when they get some of the indie developers like Angry Birds, um, you know, Rovio, they get some of these other third-party publishers iOS may very well be in trouble because you got your Xbox Live account hooked up this, you win achievements, you can message people. It's just a lot more of a social oriented phone than the iPhone. So gaming, iPhone's got it right now, but Windows Phone 7 is coming up close. Keyboard. Now the keyboard is obviously very important in phones because that's how you, that's your text entry input. The on-screen keyboard on the iPhone has without a doubt been the best keyboard ever. Android stock keyboard and even the aftermarket keyboards don't even sniff the speed and the accuracy of the iPhone. This is a test sentence. It just is superb. It's very accurate. The autocorrect is really, really well done. But Windows Phone 7, and you may not believe me at first, but I'm going to tell you right now that I prefer it as a keyboard. Um, it's really well put together, really fast, really speedy. It's not as pretty, but I think it's just as functional, if not more so. Um, I can type faster on here than I've been able to type on the iPhone, and uh, it doesn't want to focus. There you go. Uh, autocorrect on this is absolutely superb. It's better than the iPhone. iPhones is good, you know, you can type POSA and it knows you're trying to type pizza. But you could type like O-U-C-V-S and it would know you were trying to type pizza. There's no way on the iPhone that it would be able to detect that. I don't know what Microsoft has done, but it is absolutely sickening how good um, autocorrect is on here. Um, also, I like that the comma and the period are both available at hand. Um, we all know that you can double space to make an enter on the iPhone and the same ports over with uh, Windows Phone 7. But I just feel like the keyboard is a little bit more thought out. Uh, you know, pretty much all this stuff is in the same position, but, and it's snowing like crazy. Um, <laughs> we got like a foot of snow yesterday. Holy cow, it's hailing. I wanna take you over here. I know you guys are gonna be pissed at me for getting off subject, but this is definitely something that is cool. It is pouring hail. There's like beads. Yesterday it was real snow. This isn't skiing stuff. Anyway, I know you don't care, but I just thought I'd let you know. Oh, 
Here's my messy setup, which I'm going to revise and will fix later. Fear not, it's on its way. I'll have a beautiful setup that will be the best. So with that distraction in hand, I really do like the Windows Phone 7 keyboard. I think it translates better. The horizontal keyboard, I believe, on Windows Phone 7 is better than the iPhone. Now, iPhone, oh, it's locked in portrait orientation, sorry. Um, on the iPhone, it takes up the whole screen. Now, because Windows Phone 7 has a little bit if you can see there's a black bar here, it doesn't actually cover up the whole screen. It only makes it slightly larger. And this is because it doesn't want you typing like this, which is kind of what, well, the, the iPhone is really well in line, so it is pretty centered. But with a lot of phones, you'll notice you're typing like this because the top is really short and the bottom is really long. So this kind of translates to the perfect middle. And so even though it smashes the keyboard together a little, I don't feel like I'm typing like this. And I found my accuracy to be higher. I didn't like this smaller landscape keyboard at first, but it's definitely grown on me. Honestly, and you probably don't believe me, you just have to try it to be able to understand. But the Windows Phone 7 keyboard, in my opinion, is better far and above than the iPhone. And Gadget said it was almost as good. I'm going to go so far as to say it is better. I like it more, I use it more, and I found that my accuracy is way better and I hit the delete button way less often than I do on the iPhone. So, keyboard, believe it or not, goes to Windows Phone 7. Never thought Microsoft could have pulled it off, but they did. Okay, so notifications. I'm gonna be honest, they suck on both devices. I think the Android notification is far and above better than both of those two. They have the pull down menu where you can see every text you've missed, every message you missed, every email that's inboxed, and you can refer to it whenever you want. You pull it down and you're able to go directly to the app. Now, neither iOS nor Windows Phone 7 has this capability and it really kind of disappoints me. Um, we all know how the iPhone, there's the little bubble that displays and it's pretty much the same on Windows Phone 7. You've got the little one that slides over for however many emails you have or how many voicemails you have or how many messages you have. Um, uh, Third-party apps can send notifications, so eBay, if I'm running out on an auction time, it will say, Hey, Quinn, that auction's almost up, and it will let me know on both devices, but I feel like it's not very, it's worse than the iPhone. Windows Phone 7 isn't as good, and iOS sucks worse than rocks, so they're both really bad. I don't like either of them. Um, like I said earlier, Android wins by a country mile. Um, and the other thing I don't like about Windows Phone 7 is it kind of gives up. Um, I do like that when you get a text message or you get something like that, it doesn't pop up as the iPhone will relentlessly massacre you with these bubbles. Hey, look at this message. You have to press close, 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 get back to my game, close. This doesn't do that on Windows Phone 7. It pops up in the top bar and says, hey, you got a text. Just want to let you know. And then you can say, all right, whatever. And it won't bug you about it. The iPhone will pause your game and say, hey, you got a text message. And it's really annoying. However, uh, Windows Phone 7 kind of gives up. It lets you know once and then the notification goes away in like eight seconds and then you never know about it until you see a one sitting by there. Which, when I have a crucial text and I don't know it's there because it vibrates once and then it's like, all right, I'm done, I told you. It's like, wh what? The iPhone will keep bugging you until you acknowledge it and I like that on the iPhone so I wish Windows Phone 7 didn't give up but I do like that it's a, a bar system rather than a freaking annoying pop-up window. So... Notifications goes to iPhone, but they are both terrible. So <laughs> there you go. All right, so now we're going to talk about the camera application, and I'll show you how much faster Windows Phone 7 launches. Boom. Windows Phone 7 is up quite a bit before the iPhone, and I don't feel like the camera on this device is as good as on the iPhone, but it has the autofocus. There's no touch to focus, though. I feel like the iPhone's camera, the iPhone 4's camera, is better than the HTC Surrounds, but I like the software a little bit better on Windows Phone 7. On iPhone, you have pretty much three options. HDR on, HDR off, flash on, flash off, rotate the camera, which is nice. There is no front-facing cameras on any Windows Phone 7 devices, um, which I, I honestly, well, that looks like a butt. That's my hand, it looked like a butt. Anyway, um, you can review pictures, but it quits the camera app and it goes into your picture album. That's kind of annoying. It allows you just to slide over on Windows Phone 7. You just go over and then when you're ready to take your picture again, boom, you're ready. You don't have to relaunch the app. I really like that. There's also a lot um, 
you know, you can go into video cameras, you can zoom in just like you can on the iPhone. I'm not sure if you can pinch. No, you can't. But there's a lot more settings. You can do resolution, effects, metering, control, flicker, adjustment. You can set ISO, set resolution. It's a lot more expandable and user-friendly. Well, I should say the iPhone's more user-friendly, but it gives you a lot more options as an advanced cell phone photographer. You know, the macro on the iPhone is superb. There's not a lot that's better. But uh, the HTC surround itself, like the camera, isn't far behind. Um, macro on this phone is excellent. I'd say macro on this phone is better than this phone, but regular pictures, this phone is better than this phone. Um, anyway, that's not the point. We're not comparing cameras. We're comparing applications. And I would have to say that Windows Phone 7 wins it. I've always found the iPhone 4 or even just iOS's camera application to be paltry. It just gives you the bare minimum. And uh, Windows Phone 7 expands it a little. You can also directly from Windows Phone 7's camera app say, okay, upload this to here, 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 and then share it with these people. Use it as the wallpaper, add to favorites, delete it. Or you can say share with Facebook. You can do that directly from the camera app. Nothing else does that. The iPhone doesn't do that. And so I think that that is kind of a nice handy little feature that um, is is missing in the iPhone 4 and it's something that I wish was there. So camera app I'm gonna have to say it goes to Windows Phone 7.